Hey math students, okay, today we're going to go from, today we're gonna to take a point that's written in Cartesian coordinates and we're gonna change it to polar coordinates, okay? So let's start with, uh, let's start with the point two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two ten. And I wanna put that into polar coordinates. So the other day we came up with, with well, we reminded ourselves of uh, these relationships here. If I know R and theta, I can just say R times cosine of theta is X, gets me my X really fast. R times the sine of theta gets me my Y really fast. It's really, really easy. And uh, so the other relationship that I have between X and Y and R is that x squared plus y squared is r squared. And that's simply because no matter where your point is, you can always draw a right triangle where one side, one leg is the x, uh, is, is x, the other leg is y, and the hypotenuse here is gonna be r, okay? And of, so of course, x squared plus y squared, this is a right angle right here, x squared plus y squared is gonna equal r squared, okay? That's easy enough. So how would I get R? Well, let's just take the square root of 2 squared plus 10 squared, which is the square root of 4 plus 100, which is uh, the square root of 104. And if I divide that by 4, I can get 2 times the square root of 26, I believe. Okay. And let's go ahead and write that as a, uh, as a decimal. That's going to be approximately... 10.2. Okay? So R is 10.2. What about theta? Well, this is theta right here. And the tangent of theta, we said, is going to be y over x. So theta, I'll just say, it's the inverse tangent of 10 over 2, which is 5. And the inverse tangent of 5 is 78.69 degrees. So my point can be written as 210 in Cartesian coordinates, or it can be written as 10.2 for R and 78.69 degrees for theta. Now, is that the only way you can write this in polar coordinates? No, it's not. We discussed that the other day, that uh, uh, the, the, the assignment of polar coordinates to a point, it's, it's, not, it's not a unique name, okay? Uh, matter of fact, a really easy way to give this another, uh, an, another uh, coordinate pair would be just to add 360 to 78.69 degrees or subtract 360 from 78.69 degrees. I would get an angle that is coterminal with this one. Therefore, in this context, coterminal simply means pointing in the same direction. Therefore, it would also work. So don't think that this is the only answer, but it's an answer and it's a really easy answer to get. Okay. Just do the square root of x squared plus y squared, um, and uh, just do the inverse tangent of y over x, okay? Let's do another one. Okay, this time we're going to look at the point um, 16.3 and 16.3 and negative 7.6, okay? It's kind of weird looking six there. There we go. 16.3 and negative 7.6. So again, I'm just gonna do the same thing I did last time. R is going to be the square root of 16.3 squared plus 7.6 squared. And that comes out to approximately very close to 18. Now, some of you are gonna stop and say, hey, he forgot the negative. No, I didn't. Any real number squared gets you a positive number, well, except for zero, okay? But any number greater than zero, or any number, any non-zero number squared gets you a positive number. So if I'm squaring it, I can just ignore this uh, negative right there, okay? So R is about 18, so that means my point is about 18 units 
from uh, the origin. And now to find theta. Well, theta is uh, going to be a negative angle here because it's just below the x-axis. So theta will be the inverse tangent of negative 7.6 over 16.3. And when I did that, I got about negative 25 degrees. So that means my point is the point 18 and negative 25 degrees. And it's always a good idea to put your little degree uh, uh, symbol there so you're not confused and you don't actually, you don't accidentally think 25 radians. Totally different angle. Okay? Again, not too hard. Let's do another one. Let's do one that is going to be a little trickier. Okay, so this time we're going to take the point. This doesn't seem tricky at first. We're just going to take the point negative 6, negative 6, third quadrant, okay? Well, r will be the square root of 6 squared plus 6 squared, which is the square root of 72, which is merely 6 times the square root of 2, which is approximately 8 point something. What is it? 8.49. Okay, that was easy. And of course, uh, the inverse tangent of, um, okay, so y over x is going to be negative 6 over negative 6. That's just 1. So I want the inverse tangent of 1. I don't need a calculator for that. I know what that is. The inverse tangent of 1 is 45 degrees or pi over 4. Uh, but hold it. That's not down here. That's pointing up here. What gives? There's a reason for this. Think about it. We're taking the inverse tangent. Remember what we know about the inverse tangent function. It has a range of negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, or in degrees from negative 90 degrees to 90 degrees. When I use my calculator to find the inverse tangent of a number, it's always going to give me an answer in quadrant 4 or quadrant 1. If my point is actually in quadrant 2 or quadrant 3, I'm going to make a little boo-boo, okay? So I need to make an adjustment to this. Now fortunately, the adjustment is easy, easy, easy to make. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you two possible adjustments you can make. So one adjustment is to say, well, it shouldn't be 45 degrees, it should be the other angle that has a tangent of 1. And that other angle is, of course, just add 180 to that, and you'll get 225. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the inverse tangent of 1 plus 180 degrees, and that gets me 225 degrees. I can do plus 180, I can do minus 180, either way. If I'm in radians, I can do plus pi, I can do minus pi, either way. Whichever, whatever you do, you have to add half a circle. Because remember, uh, the tangent, y equals tangent of x, has a period of pi, which means if you add pi, you're going to get the same answer. Okay? Um, so, uh, so we had to make this adjustment. There's another adjustment you can make as well, and that is leave theta alone, keep it being 45 degrees, but change r. So we could say, well, no, I'm pointing in this direction, but instead of going 8.45 units in this direction, I'm going to go 8.45 units in the opposite, sorry, 8.49 units in the opposite direction. So that means I'm just going to make my r negative. So this could either be 8.49 and 225 degrees, or negative 8.49 and 45 degrees. Both of those answers are perfectly correct. Okay? And as you know, there are an infinite number of other ways of labeling this point in polar coordinates that will also be correct because you have an infinite number of angles that are coterminal with 225 or with 45 degrees. All right? Let's do another one.
let's do negative 5 and 12, okay? Let me just rewrite this. Okay, here are my axes. Negative 5 and 12 is up here, okay? First off, r is going to be the square root of uh, 25, that's negative 5 squared, plus 144, that's 12 squared, that's the square root of 169, that is 13, okay? So this is 13 units from the origin. And theta, I would say theta is going to be the inverse tangent of 12 over negative 5, and that gets me negative 67.4 degrees. And what you notice is the exact same thing happened. I'm pointing this direction where I want to be pointing in the opposite direction. So what do I do? I do the exact same adjustment that I did last time. And that is either you make R negative, so negative 13 and negative 67.4 degrees, or you leave R alone and you change theta by adding 180 degrees to it. So I would get, what would I get? I would get a 112.6 degrees, okay? So either, please don't adjust both R and theta. You'll just be, you'll be going across the circle and then going back again, so you, you won't do anything. Uh, either you make your R negative or you add or subtract half a circle, that is 180 degrees or pi, to your theta, okay? Uh, now, the question is, when are we going to have to do that? Well, think about it. The range of the inverse tangent function is here and here, quadrants 1 and 4. So as long as you're over here, you're good to go. It's only when you're in quadrant 2 or 3 that you have a problem. How can you tell if you're in quadrant 2 or 3? You look at your x-coordinate. If your x-coordinate is negative, you're somewhere over here. Okay? So, what does this mean? It means that uh, we'll say R is uh, R is the square root, oh, hang on a second, if x is greater than 0, then r is going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared, and theta is going to be the inverse tangent of y over x. If x is less than 0, then either r is negative square root of x squared plus y squared, and theta is the inverse tangent of y over x, or r is positive x squared plus y squared, and theta is the tangent, the inverse tangent of y over x plus or minus 180 degrees. And of course, if you're speaking radians, then you replace 180 degrees with pi, okay? That's how you go from rectangular to polar coordinates. Hope this helped. See you next video. Bye-bye.